Okay, I'm with Dr. Jim King, and this is a real pleasure because uh, he's one of the pioneers and has a lot of experience with the microcurrent machine. And can you tell me the story about? Sure. Uh, I was uh, I grew up in, in Aberdeen, South Dakota. In 1961, we moved our practice to Rapid City, South Dakota, to join the practice of Dr. Leland Michael. Dr. Michael was was involved with had a large general optometric practice, but also had an interest in children's reading and learning. And there were three of us, Dr. Michael, myself, and our assistant, Mrs. Moorhead, that developed what was called the MKM, Michael King Moorhead Monocular and Binocular Reading Test and the MKM Reading Systems, a phonic mnemonic method of teaching children how to read. And uh, Dr. Michael was a curious person and he went to a chiropractor for for ales and and was given a, a tens unit uh, because he was a, he was quite athletic uh, center in football in his years past and played a lot of uh, paddle ball in later years to the point where he, he was very competitive but tore ligaments and had pain and had a tens unit that was helped in part by a, a, a chiropractor friend and he became interested in uh, in the electrical stimulation aspect of nerves and, and uh, functioning. And the more that he got into it, he, uh, he thought that there might be some possibilities to improve visual functions, that the, the cells, the retinal cells, uh, before they died completely, might be somehow rekindled, re-stimulated through electricity. And uh, he uh, initially tried a modification of a TENS unit developing some other activities uh, and which which were looked upon very frankly unfavorably by the ophthalmological community. They thought he was rather weird and, and I practiced with him for many times and he, when he was doing things that were different but he was getting results. And then he, he went on and eventually he died uh, of a, a lung cancer. And uh, Dr. John Jardine, one of our, our friends in the Black Hills Optometric Society, who was also a, a referring doctor to Dr. Michael for macular degeneration, referred his mother and other patients and, and saw success. And Dr. Michael had asked me uh, if I wanted to take over the practice of, of the electrostimulation activity, uh, but that was not my baby. My, mine was in memory, uh, mnemonics, and so I, I went in a different direction with working with children. But John Jardine then, uh, so this is too good to let die. So he took over Dr. Michael's patients and uh, with the, the microcurrent stimulation. And uh, every uh, March, <clears throat> we have a, a high school reunion from our Aberdeen friends out in Phoenix. And, and uh, living in South Dakota in, in March and had going to a meeting in Phoenix is, is quite a, a nice thing. So. About 20 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, we, uh, I was coming out here to the, the meeting and, and my wife uh, called me at the office and she said, Dr. Jardine had, uh, uh, see, that was 10 years ago at that point, it, it re made the, the Rapid City Journal paper. And I said, oh, in the court news? And he said, no, and he, he helped some famous golfer in his eyesight. And as it turned out, it was Sam Sneed, the famous slamming Sam Sneed, who was there in, uh, who had heard about his work and was in Hot Springs, South Dakota. And uh, Dr. Jardine had given him just a rather short, uh, quote, treatment with his electrical stimulation approach. And uh, it, it, his visual acuity improved from something like, I don't know, 2100 to 2030 or something like that. Quite amazing in a, in, in a matter of, of days to the point where, he, where Sam could then uh, pass his driver's license test. And this little article appeared in the, uh, the first the Hot Springs paper, was picked up by the Rapid City Journal. And since I was coming out to Phoenix, I made copies of the Rapid City Journal uh, item, thinking some of my older high school friends might be uh, having uh, macular degeneration considerations. So I brought along a couple of those, and my, I stayed with my brother, my my uh, sis, my nephew, my <coughs> Dr. Wayne Holtzman, 
uh, who, who is a psychologist who lives in Phoenix, uh, and we were we were driving to pick up his dog, Boogie, for, on a Saturday, and Paul Harvey News came on, and uh, I said, oh, I, I uh, met Paul Harvey at the uh, 100th anniversary of the American Optometric Association when it, it, it celebrated its it's meeting in St. Louis, and he said, oh, Paul Harvey lives in Phoenix part of the time. And I said, oh, that, and, and Paul Harvey had mentioned in his presentation that he had a personal interest in macular de degeneration, and uh, so I thought that that might be something that would interest him. So I, I took uh, the paper and I said, do you know where he lives? And, and he said, yes, I do. I happen to know that. So the, on that next Saturday, we drove past and uh, and I went up to a beautiful home. Uh, I went through the gate. There was a little uh, uh, squawk box at the bottom, and I thought, "Oh, geez, now what do I do?" And so I just uh, started approaching it, and then the, the gates came open, and a, a woman came out and said, "Could I help you?" And I said, "Well, I'm Dr. Jim King. I have some information that might be of interest to, to Mr. Harvey." And she said, "Oh, just a minute." And so I gave that to her. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, when I got back home in Rapid C City, uh, I, I called John Jarding the next uh, Tuesday when I, I got home and he said, oh, the, his office, he, John was in a meeting and, and the, John, the office assistant said, oh, you're the one. And what had happened on that, on that Monday, John had mentioned that uh, new treatment for macular degeneration, electrical stimulation, Dr. John Jarding, Hot Springs, South Dakota, old friend Sam Sneed, and the, uh, the phone literally rang off the wall. They had to put in extra banks of calls mm. all over the world they were coming in. And uh, the, then it was uh, aired again on, on that following Saturday, the same thing happened. There were just thousands and there were there were people from every state and uh, several countries that, that came for, for Dr. Jarning's uh, treatment. And the, the problem was from the, the local com ophthalmological community, uh, they're not trained in this sort of thing and they thought it was voodoo, frankly, in which uh, uh, you put some electrical stimulation on a closed lid and you help people see with, uh, with things that are supposedly untreatable. It sounds rather strange. But uh, but the, the patients that I saw improved, and uh, that there were other people then that that uh, took this up as well. So it, it was it was interesting. That just within the last week, Paul Harvey died, and uh, all of these memories came back to me as far as this. Now I know that that you had heard of uh, this treatment through Paul Harvey, as I understand it, and uh, got interested in this aspect, uh, and then actually treated uh, Sam Sneed later uh, right. in Florida along that same line. So it's interesting how these things kind of mm -hmm. come come together. So uh, the uh, there were there were some books, uh, the uh, Body Electric, and so forth that I did. And, and it, some of it sounded rather strange to me, frankly. But uh, the, the more I got in, and, and I had done a lot of work with uh, uh, amblyopia with, through light stimulation, and, uh, and a, a lot of our ophthalmological um, friends looked upon that rather strangely, too, uh, in that we could improve uh, amblyopia by flashing orange lights and so forth that, and the macula, macular, degen macular treatment. There was a Dr. Otwell who developed some rather strange techniques uh, along that line, but they were effective. And having an open mind, we tried anything that would help, and it was much better than the patching activities and the other activities that we yeah. tried before. And so we, we had an open mind to try some of these things. So um, uh, the more I got into it, the, the more it made sense, the more I studied as far as nerve regeneration and as far as uh, 